I'm attending a special two-part weather school tailored for pilots. My flying has evolved in recent years from day trips and local flights to multi-day, multi-stop excursions. And for those to be successful, I have to have confidence in the weather. So who better than aviation meteorologist Simon Keeling to teach me the skills I need to identify the flyable weather days? Weather School teaches pilots about weather and what they really need to know about weather. I want to be able to plan trips three or more days in advance and the meteorology theory I learnt when I trained for my private pilot's licence isn't helping me. Obviously you'll do your exams through the PPL, you do your MET, you tick the boxes, you come away from it, but do you really understand weather that much? Are you going to be able to get from A to B? Can you trust the forecast that you're looking at? It's about building your confidence in the weather. And experience has shown me that I need to improve my decision making about the weather. In May 2018, I and a number of other pilots flew across Europe, but we got into difficulty south of Genoa in Italy. Thunderstorms blocked our route. Golf Bravo Hotel Oscar Romeo uh, is diverting to Pisa. The diversion to Pisa set us back a whole day, and the landing at this international airport wasn't cheap. Simon, that was a really hairy flight, I won't lie. And I want to learn from it. Yeah. And I want to apply some of the lessons that I'm learning on your courses to make sure I don't do that again. Okay. So where did I go wrong? Okay, well, let's first of all look at the analysis chart. Okay, these are the absolute basic working chart that a pilot should look at, and there's something screaming in, uh, at you in the face. So there. let's see where we were. We were coming from France. And you were coming across here. By Genoa. By Genoa, so you were flying across the Gulf of Genoa here into northern Italy. So I can see this all looks quite complex here. We've got different different yeah. lows and highs. Yeah, yeah. Now, in the Mediterranean, in uh, sort of mid-May, that's not a particularly unusual pattern. Right. So you may see lots of little highs and lots of little lows shown on there. What is starting to concern, concern me a little bit is that there's a trough on there. That's that line just in there. And what we've learned on your course is that, that means you've got deep instability, yeah. you've got thunderstorms. Absolutely, and they're grouped together. So you've also got embedded cunim risk there as well. So you're not necessarily going to know when you fly into cloud that actually within that cloud that you're flying in, there is going to be some pretty mighty sea breeze, which at this time of year are going to be very active. The TAF, or Terminal Area Forecast for Pisa, also alerted us to thunderstorms, but I wrongly assumed that I would see the cumulonimbus clouds and could fly around them. But because of that trough, the thunderstorms were embedded and grouped together, literally surrounding us. And because the TAF said tempo and not Prop 30 or Prop 40, thunderstorms and rain were inevitable. Whenever you see tempo with no probabilities, absolutely take no chances with that and whenever you see as well something like a prop 30 or a prop 40 with heavy thunderstorms predicted again as an average pilot don't take any risks for it a bad day to fly in that area yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely hopefully attending weather school will prevent me from making the same mistakes in the future so we're going around in an anti-clockwise direction around low pressure and around a, uh, a clockwise direction around high pressure I came to part one of the course a few months ago and we were reminded of the different air masses and how they drive different weather. For example, the best weather is from a tropical continental air mass. A returning polar maritime brings heavy showers and thunderstorms. Polar continental airflow will probably be fine on day one, but by day three expect poor visibility and overcast skies. With the wind here is probably a southeasterly. In addition to air masses, we were reminded what the different frontal systems do and were introduced to those analysis and forecast charts and satellite imagery. I and the other attendees have already found it easier to read the charts and make pretty good judgments now about the best days to fly or which directions to fly in. Being able to predict yourself rather than relying on someone else's predictions. You can actually take the information, the raw information, and actually use that for your own um, purposes. And how might you use the information that you've learnt on these courses in terms of making better use of your flying days? Well, I'll be able to plan um, 
the, the flying a lot better and I'll be able to look forward in a, f a few days in, in, in advance and able to um, decide, oh yeah, that's going to be a good day. I shall perhaps set aside my other chores that I have to do and try and keep those days free. Well, worthwhile then? Oh, absolutely, yes, yes, no, no doubt. On part two of the Weather School course, we learnt some new tricks for forecasting further into the future. 500 millibar forecast charts show upper level pressure and are a good indicator of general trend. This one, for example, shows a U-shape over Britain. Unsettled weather is on the cards for a few days. You can use these charts to see up to a week in advance. But by far the most useful bit of information out there for pilots comes from skew T diagrams. What are skew T diagrams? Okay, so skew T's are a diagram which essentially shows us temperature versus height. So it's telling us what the profile of the atmosphere is like above where we are at any particular time. By looking at what that temperature is, and then looking at what the dew point temperatures are at various different heights, we can then see how unstable or stable the atmosphere is. That tells us if there are going to be showers. It also tells us where there's going to be cloud, whether that cloud's going to be in layers, or whether they're going to be single, small, cumulus clouds. And from skewtees as well, you can predict winds as well as freezing levels. Skewtees open up the world to the pilot. On the course, Simon showed us a radio sonde. It's a package that is attached to a balloon and sent up into the atmosphere. We have eight stations in the UK and each releases four of these devices every day. So inside you've got a bit of solid state circuitry and it's measuring temperature, humidity and it's then tracked by GPS to give you wind direction and speed. And that little fella is reporting back every 30 seconds these parameters going up through the atmosphere. That went up to just over 100,000 feet over Norfolk. <laughs> the data sent back from the radio sons is fed into computers and they produce these strange looking diagrams that are actually detailed weather forecasts, again up to a week in advance. I asked Simon to talk me through them. So on here what we're looking at is temperature which is the red line, we're looking at dew point which is the blue line and the basics of it are that where the atmosphere is more moist the blue line will come close to the red line. That, for pilots, is cloud. So what the skewtees tell us is how much cloud there's going to be, what the base of the cloud is, what the top of the cloud is, and if the cloud is just a cumulus cloud or if it's in various different layers. These things are the Bible as far as weather forecasters Fantastic. are concerned. This diagram tells us that the cloud base is at the 900 millibar level, so about 3,000 feet. The tops are at the 850 millibar level, so 4,500 feet. Because the difference between the temperature and dew point in the cloud is 2 degrees, it will be broken cloud. This grey line to the right of the temperature is telling us that the air is convective, so the cloud type will be cumulus. These graphs are so useful. There are links in the video description to Simon's Weather School, along with links to where you can find the charts we've shown today. I'm pretty sure that Weather School has given me new confidence in my flight planning, and I'll be putting those new skills to the test in the coming weeks and months as I set off on new adventures in the skies. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, and share. Fly safely, my friends.